It is almost Christmas and I am out again once more on another of the Triumph Heritage range of bikes. This is the Street Scrambler, the 900cc, 64 horsepower, 83 newton metres of torque, parallel twin. This bike is a bit more scrambler-y <laughs> than the Street Twin. So this has the look of the scrambler but not the full suspension i think this is really more of a look than a full-on off-road machine but today we're going to take it out the sun is out the roads are wettish and a little bit greasy we're going to take this bike out for a bit of a spin see what it's like see how it compares to the other of the triumph heritage range i've been riding recently so without further ado chop seat roll the intro <laughs> So jumping aboard, it's a very comfortable place to be. You've got a nice view. I do like this sort of primer grey tank finish colour as well. I'm not sure what this colour's called. I'll pop it on the screen. But before we get going, and in the usual fashion, let's do a very quick noise check. Let's go. Give it the beans. Yeah, it goes okay. Of course, it's only 64 horsepower, so a 900 cc. So it's not going to blow your socks off when it comes to performance. It also weighs 223 kilos wet. So you know, it's a, it's a reasonable, substantial bike for a 900. It has the normal parallel twin, 270 degree T-plane crank. Um, you know, that is uh, like the uh, Big Bang big bang crank if you like that gives it a lovely sound lots of character I mean, these new parallel twins everyone's on the bandwagon of the of the 270 degree parallel twin crank aren't they because they really do feel and sound very much sort of like a v twin so it's got that bit of character and it's a great configuration for actually making reasonable power and torque as well the ergo's on the bike, I'm six foot two, so I'm a great big bugger, six foot two, about 20 stone. And as I've said before, you know, the Triumph Heritage range of bikes are quite small bikes. They're not really designed for great big hoofing, huge people like me. So this has got a really reasonable seat height. It feels quite low. The pegs actually feel quite high. So I do feel like I'm sat very low on this bike. It's comfortable, but this will fit a shorter rider. And that's what I think this bike is all about. I borrowed the 1200 Scrambler. You know, that bike is more of a proper off-road machine. I mean, it's still a road-focused bike, but it's got the longer travel suspension, a 21-inch front wheel. Now, that felt a good size for me. And if I was to buy, at six foot two, if I was looking to get a classic Heritage Triumph, it would be the 1200 scrambler for me because i'm a bit taller this bike i think brings some of the look of that 1200 scrambler but with a lower seat height so the shorties can fit on <laughs> the shorties the bars are high swept back towards me i'm not stretching forward i'm literally sat perfectly bolt upright which is great it's a very comfortable position the downside with this position is you've got all of your weight on your bum so thankfully the seat on this feels absolutely delicious really comfortable it's a really nice quality seat it feels like an alcantara sort of leather which i'll give you a walk when we stop for the walk around we'll have a good look at the seat but it's a lovely looking seat and it feels comfortable the suspension is conventional way up forks and the rear is the two you know separate sprung rear so it's not massive the travel suspension i actually think the suspension on this is identical to the street twin so it's that same suspension so really even though this bike is called the scrambler i think really it's just going for the look of the scrambler it has a 19 inch front wheel whereas the the street twin has a 17 so this does have a 19 inch front so it's not a full 21 like the uh, the 1200 scrambler it's a 19 so it's a bit in the middle you know you can perhaps take it down a gravel lane if you want but it's you know it's not really you could never call this 
an off-road machine other parts of the scrambler look it has that high level exhaust which i really like the look of that it looks great it also has spoked wheels as well so that's your scrambler part of it you know that's the scrambler look it's also got quite a tasty little looking bash plate as well but we will show the bike off properly at the walk around just hold your horses the great thing about this bike is that grunt it's got 80 newton meters of torque which is pretty reasonable and you know at a higher gear you can open the throttle it doesn't complain it doesn't jolt it doesn't start trying to knock your fillings out it just responds and gives you drive so this engine like all of the heritage engines they're all about the, the torque delivery maximum torque is at 3200 revs so it's very very low down the rev range so that's how you ride these bikes you ride using that tool it's, it's almost pointless to rev them as you rev them it just gets more noisy and the vibes increase you don't really go any quicker so this is definitely a lazy way of riding which which fits in with how easy the bike is to ride if you do want to go quick on it let's give it a little bit of whirly first gear let's give it a little bit of a go i mean that is 60 you know it will get to 60 pretty quick pretty reasonable that i'd say um a little bit more vibey as the revs increase but actually that went better than i thought it was gonna that got to 60 pretty reasonable got to 60 in second gear so you can see it's actually quite long geared actually i thought it'd be a bit shorter geared than that braking is by brembo we've got a four pot single brembo caliper up front so a single sided disc with a Brembo four-port caliper. Yeah, the braking's more than sufficient for the type of performance you're gonna be doing on this machine, that's fine. The rear brake is nice, quite sharp on the rear. It's definitely the sort of bike because the suspension is quite wallowy and there's quite a lot of flex in the bike. I think you'll be set, if you do wanna go a bit quicker, you'll be setting it up on the rear brake. You're not gonna be heavily braking on the front on this. It would definitely upset the suspension too much. So use the rear brake. To set your speed in the corners and stuff and i think yeah it could be reasonable the tires are sort of a bit of a 80 20 blend for on-road off-road i'd prefer you know it depends what you want to use this bike for if you do want to go down the odd gravel lane on this bike then the tires would probably handle a little bit of tight pack gravel but no more than that i'd be honest for me i'd rather have more of a road focused tire I think this bike is definitely more about the look of the Scrambler than actually taking it off-road. I could be wrong, you know, some people may buy it for a little bit of off-roading, off but I think if you want to be a little bit more serious about your Scrambler off-roading, you really need the, the 1200 with the much bigger 200, I think it's got like 220mm travel suspension on that. Definitely more, more road focus than off-road off focus. Around the bends. It's not bad actually, you know, like I say, use the rear brake, I'm using a bit of front there as well. <laughs> Just so I can stop, it's a bit greasy, I'm spreading the load a little bit. But yeah, it's okay. You can you can go a reasonable speed, but it's certainly not a performance machine around the twisties. But yeah, not bad, pretty reasonable. Power over the mud and the water, look at this road. Disgraceful. The bike comes with some traction control, very rudimentary electronics really. I mean you've got traction, you've got, that's a big bump, you've got ABS, you know, but it's not lean sensitive, it's, it's a fairly rudimentary system. You only actually have, if you go through the modes on the bike, it's only got road or rain, you know, that, that's it for your modes. There's not even an off-road mode, which again, makes you think it's not a serious off-road machine by any stretch of the imagination. Let's have a quick picky, shall we? In front of the dirt. So let's go in and do some scramblering. Let's go for a bit of off-road action. Let's take her in. A bit of off-road for the video, just for those that do want to go a bit of off-road. <laughs> you could do it. That thumbnail is going to disappoint some people, isn't it? <laughs> and I think I'm going to tip this, up, tip this bike off-road properly. I didn't. I was just dicking around for photos. Whoa! Oh, yeah.
yeah, she's getting lively already. <laughs> oh, my glasses are steaming out. <laughs> oh, yes. See, not, not really an off-road machine, but <laughs> nothing to stop you having a bit of fun. So there she is, the 2021 and potentially 2022 as well, Triumph Street Scrambler. Let's have a closer look. So first thing to mention is this exhaust. You can see all of the heat cladding on it. When you're sitting on it, your legs are sort of touching between here and here. Now that is a bit warmer. Touching that now, that is actually quite hot, but my leg was really resting on this piece here and I can touch that with my hand. There's a little bit of warmth in it, but it's not too hot. So in the summer, I think you're gonna get a little bit of heat from that exhaust, if I'm honest, but doesn't it look beautiful? I've heard some people say for Euro 5, you can't change the end cans. So people have said that with the Speed Twin, but here, halfway down the pipe, we have a join. So you should be able to change that you'd have to change the exhaust from there back though you can't just change the end cans you have to change this whole section from here starting at the front we've got the brembo caliper that's a decent caliper that that's the same caliper which is on my smcr so it's reasonable brembo disc and but it's only single-sided but the, the brakes are perfectly adequate on this the forks are conventional with your gaiters, you know, conventional way up forks. They are, however, non-adjustable. As I mentioned, the seat is very nice. There's lots of padding in this. I've been riding for about an hour and absolutely no discomfort whatsoever. It's got a sort of leather on the side of it. I don't know if it is real leather. I don't think it is real leather. And then like a textured piece on top. Again, I think it is a plastic cover, but it's actually not a bad job. It's a decent looking standard seat that. On the rear, you have a small pillion seat as well. Not massive, but uh, you will get a pillion on there. We have an LED tail light, but not LED indicators, conventional bulb indicators. The headlight is also halogen. There's no LEDs whatsoever within the headlight. Front wheel is 19 inch wearing these Metzler sort of dual compound there's a little bit of off-roadiness to these i think these are the same tires which is on the 1200 scrambler and i i didn't think much to them on that either so i think if i was buying one of these bikes i think if these are the same as the scrambler ones the 1200 scrambler i'd be looking to change them i do like this little scrambler number board now that is it's a plastic panel but with a metal street scrambler emblem on i do like that that looks very nice but there she is, the street scrambler. Let's jump back on. Power! Yeah, it's quick enough this. For the sort of bike this is, it's quick enough. You know, I, you're not gonna want, you could, I mean, if you want, if you want a bit of something a bit faster, you want a bit more power, then you go, you want something that handles a bit better, then you go for the new speed twin, don't you? If you're not too worried about that, then I think this is where your money should go. If you want to just cruise around and enjoy the scenery, you know, and just have a bike which is fantastic quality, beautiful to ride, so nice to ride this is, and just cruise between cafes. I think this could be my choice, you know. I found the Speedmaster was felt too small to ride. You know, that sort of cruiser bike being bigger, I felt like if I'm on a cruiser, the bike needs to be bigger. Whereas this isn't trying to be a cruiser, you know, and, and I, yeah, I really like this. I much prefer this to the Speedmaster. This is a really lovely bike to ride. Very easy to ride, beautiful. I've got a lot of time for this one. What about niggles, I hear you asking. Have I noticed any niggles? Well, I really haven't. It, it's easy to find neutral. The gearbox is lovely. I think the only niggles you could say is just the exhaust, your, your legs touching the exhaust, but if you buy the Scrambler, you know that's what it's like, but it is, you can feel it against your thigh. It's not hot. Riding it in a 30 degree summer's day could be a different matter, but today I can't feel any heat. Well, any heat would be quite welcome from that exhaust today. I wish it had dual clocks. I wish it had a rev counter. I know it's not a performance machine, but I just like an analog rev counter. It doesn't have one. I'd also maybe like 
this is, feels a little bit plasticky the clocks maybe have those not necessarily chrome but like an anodized metal finish that would be nice apart from that i can find no fault with this machine no fault at all the single disc braking is perfect perfectly adequate no problem there the rear brakes are good no no niggles no niggles oh we're riding into the sun now that is very bright oh i should have put my dark visor in i'm gonna actually try one of those um transitions of on my christmas list i've got a transitions visor for the x x spirit because it's so annoying riding in the winter you've got bright sunshine during the day you know reflections coming off the road but then it gets dark at four o'clock so if you're out for the day you need to carry two visors with you which is just a pain in the bum so I'm going to try one of those transitions visors which changed dark sunlight so if anyone and let me know in the comments if they're worth having because at the moment it's on my Christmas list and they're about £180 so if anyone's seen one at a better price than 180 quid, also let me know in the comments because uh, Santa's a bit stretched this time of year what with Brexit he's struggling so the cheaper I can get it the better so let me know if they're any good and if you know where you can get them at a reasonable price because I want to give one a go because this you know if I could put the dark visor in but I need another visor it just becomes a pain in the bum so transitions visors let me know in the comments guys what you think about those so there we are the street scrambler a very quick look at this bike I've got to be honest I haven't spent a great deal of time on this because the weather's been bad I've been ill with nasty colds and stuff and I've just not been able to get out so this is really just a very quick look at this machine a first ride video outcome is it's very nice <laughs> it's very very nice what's going on here so uh, if you've enjoyed it please leave me a, a big difference to the YouTube gods and uh, if you've not subscribed please have a look at some i'll put some links to some other of the triumph heritage range reviews i've done have a look at those please consider subscribing i'm sort of trying to reach 100k now so i'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers i've been doing this game for about eight years seven or eight years i've been uploading weekly youtube videos that's, a, that's, a, that's a, for the last eight years it's my goal to reach 100k and it, i can smell it now i'm getting close so if you've enjoyed the video please consider giving me a subscribe and i will see you on the next video cheers guys power level one which is full power <laughs>